this particular painting I have a few preconceived ideas so I've already textured um, some underneath areas especially around these two lines here um, and then put another coat of white emulsion over the top now some um, burnt sienna acrylic because I want to put my gold leafing over that and let it break through I also want some darker somber areas around here that I'm going to bring out at the edges and then I'm going to put very light um, greens all over, different, a mixture of um, wet into wet type greens, I hope, over which I'm then going to um, paint some figurative images uh, and a lot of um, patterned flowers as well. I want this to be a lot of very high keys, creams, pinks, pastel shades, um, with an underlying somberness about my life. So there's the, the happy parts and all the bright surface, but underlying uh, the things that are happening within me. I'll start working with some dark acrylic at the sides of this. And this is a traditional technique actually because it would be uh, red lead oxide or red uh, or a sienna that the um, original gold leafing would have been done around anyway. Some people would say that that was a painting finished in itself, I guess, but um, not quite for me. And I now want to get a good ground on the colours underneath here. Take a couple of coats to get what I want, I can see that. And then I'll just a nice even coat on still of this uh, green, which you see when it dries has dried a bit darker. Like I say, some people would find these abstract effects and patterns almost a finished work, but I want to take them the other way around and show just how much abstraction is actually in figurative work. People tend to think each other way around, they can simplify the, the figurative down into abstraction, but in fact we can quite happily work the other way around. Now that was quite a, a cool green, a bluey green. Let's start adding a slightly warmer green over the top now. A um, garden scape in this way. Now to a filbert, which is going to be ground before, so that I can do some slightly thinner strokes here and there. Right, now back to the, the lighter green. Start to play some of the lighter green textures back in again, but this time with the smaller brush. I want to do is be placing on the gold leafing onto this. Now it's time to apply a special glue size for the gold leafing. It's a bit like PVA glue. You put it on and once it's uh, dry it becomes clear and as soon as it's dry and clear you can start to lay the leaf over the top. Here I'm using multicoloured uh, metallic foiling and also on the left hand side I start to use ordinary gold leafing. Both of them are artificial, quite reasonably priced, about 10 sheets uh, for £10 so about a pound a sheet. You lay the gold leaf delicately across the top of the drying glue and then with a stiff badger hair brush or a gentle bristle brush just gently press down on top working the gold onto the surface of the uh, painting that you're doing. And now you see these lovely effects we can get. You can work acrylics over these, better still oils go over the top of them. So you can paint more details over the top or you can blend the edges together as I'm about to do. My next stage is now to start working the greens in again and work into the gold leaf just slightly. Until now I've just been adding these leaf effects with brushes using my uh, filberts as well as the round to give different shapes to the edges of the leaves and building those two different greens up one over another. But now I'm going to move on to splattering with the brush and I've used the uh, lighter green, the bluey green, with a little bit of white and a bit more water 
and just using the brush to splatter it onto the painting giving an overall accidental effect of texture and then I'll start working over this again as well afterwards. plonking in some colour. Let's look at a, a nice cool to get some um, body colour into it first. A little bit of cerulean. Some warm got in with that as well. We'll cover that on straight away. These cool flesh tints. The adjustments. I want this to just blend into this. I don't want to be, um, to be a part of the whole. I will take some ultramarine blue, lovely rich blue, with a little touch of purple into that. Start to work a bit into her hair here. Get some colour going. And the dress here at the front. Just coming around her shoulder. Now darker still, take a bit of Prussian blue. Prussian blue and a little brown. Let's have a look at our darker colours here. I want to start now to just feel some of these. Darks are happening. Don't go into too much detail yet. Just find the uh, just indicate and gradually build up the figure, not um, come straight in with lots of detail. That's not the, the feeling of this figure here. Now I need to put the drawing together a bit more. And you start to see the form of the face coming out. Cooler flesh tones, so now I to go towards the warmer ones and uh, I'll take a medium filbert. As I say, I don't want to go too much into detail on this, it's a matter of um, just indicating what I want. I want to make a very cool yellow, so we'll take some lemon yellow and white. And suddenly hit the sunlight with that. It should match with the gold leafing as well. And use the paint in a lovely oil paint fashion. In other words, creamily. Coming down back here. Right, now we need to move on to a curlew, and that's going to be up the other corner, over here. Just let the uh, colours disappear back into the background, and I'm going to paint some of the darker pinks of the feather in. Nice pinions. And then the darker shapes just coming down there. A 
Put a leg there and put a leg there. And a slightly cooler, a little bit of purple into it maybe. Colour coming around the shadows. And with a finer brush, just pick up the back of the eye. Something lighter to go on there. across the wings. So there's our two curlers just as much as we need them. And I'm ready to come back out and think which part we need next. So now it's time to have a lady reclining on this section here. I put the very basics of the lines in. And again we want that same sort of flesh tone to start off with that light Gray, just to block it in, just letting it go over the surface before we put any heavier paint on. I'm going to have to start painting some darks around some of these forms or I shan't see them. And then it goes into more purple, comes around here. A little bit of touch of purple into that. Drawing the whole thing out of the, the background. We've done the birds, we've done the two figures for the moment, now I'm working on these two hands. I'm working over the um, gold as well as the background uh, greens now, so I've got to try and be a bit more kind of subtle with my colours. Um, a bit solid as well because I'm painting gold over gold in flesh tones. Um, I'm going to need a bit of dark around them in places just to bring them out. Because this is very similar, this colour now in the flesh tone, to the... Um, gold paint behind, some quite subtle colours, pinks and things going on, we've got to try and find. I'm using a little uh, burnt sienna at the moment, tiny touch of Indian red. I need to use fairly opaque paint to cover this um, Look at a little bit more of the warps here on this. Too much, just a maybe a bit more 
Got here on there. Let's work on. Let's work on this other hand now. Two overt, just to bring it up. Let's start with the uh, cooler colour. It's a little bit stronger than the flesh tones behind it.
trying to get this fairground horse and the merry-go-round in somewhere here and I want to actually use and incorporate that into the neck of the horse if I can. So I'm not able to draw in with a pencil on this one, I've just got to go straight in, hope my drawing skills are good enough to be able to use a brush straight off like this. So that's our basic of that. It looks like this gun would be ideally suited for what I'm doing here now. And again, we can paint, uh, hopefully, we can paint this uh, quite complicated horse by just putting the right shapes in the right places one to another. to paint the uh, bird in this top corner and then maybe the cat with that So I've decided to put a bit more um, gold leafing down here uh, because I felt that it would be nice to have uh, some of the rails of the merry-go-round going along. What I need to do now is just come in with one of my brushes and just give it a slight feeling of that spiral. So if I take some deep greens here, a bit of blue and green. of cats to finish and then be ready to do the more looser work of splattering into it.
okay, well, I think we've just about finished the main work on this painting. So we're going to take it down now and lay it flat to prepare it ready for the uh, splattering effects of the cherry blossom that I want. And then we'll work into it in more detail again with brushes after that. Now this might seem a bit drastic, but it is the effect that I was going for originally. That is to get all the cherry blossom. I'm not going to get that without actually painting over. It's a big risk, but I'm not going to get that without painting over the, uh, the work I've done. Which will also help, I think, to link it together. So I've got to start putting in this cherry blossom, or splashes, as it is at the moment, across everything. I'm trying to keep it fairly accidental. Having said that, I still want to be able to work in these. It's a very risky procedure to risk losing what you've already painted, but it's nothing gained if nothing ventured. I do want this to come right the way through to a very, very light pink, just off, off white at the moment. And this is where I'm also hoping to balance out the um, horse this side. Hope it works, otherwise, all that painting's being done for nothing. <laughs> now, I'm stuck it in some pink gum. You better be pretty brave to try something like this if you've never done it before. Let's you put all this work into something. The brave or a total idiot. Perhaps I'm a partial one. I'll take a few layers of different uh, pinks and reds and uh, pale blue greys to, to work this up. It's just a matter of spluttering special effects on me. I have to actually try and get the uh, feeling the right colours for this and not make it seem separated out and yet still see what's underneath. And it's just a matter of intuitively trying to find what light shapes and dark shapes should be. these branches of blossoms should come across the picture in diagonals. A bit redder still perhaps now. Hopefully by painting the wet into the wet as well we're getting some quite interesting effects of, for these flowers too. I don't want to come into this yet with some garden flowers, marigolds and so on. So we haven't finished by any means. Painting like this, a lot of work, a lot of building up. Right, I need to come back in with some blue greys.
now we've only got uh, this area to finish I think. Most of this is very busy, possibly busy enough. I don't think I want to do too much more. If you look at a painting and always decide when it is you want to finish rather than going too far with it to make it too detailed. What a nice loose abstract painting with these figurative images in to give uh, a story. Um, now we've got the cats, the bird here, Liz and Rosie and my, my girls, another cat with carries down here and the two curlews, and then this fairground horse coming just into here, and the seagull at the top. To make a little bit more of this bar coming down here, um, and I'm wondering about some delphiniums here, I'm just picking out a few more orange flowers. Let's give this side a little more life. Pick the horse out too much, just want to bring it out a bit. I really had amongst these delphiniums by using some of this blue, I think. Well, I think that's the final of it now. We could keep fiddling with it. Um, but it's showing all I want to say. And now we'll take a look at the final thing. And uh, I think that's enough for now. And zoom in on some of the areas that we've worked in more detail on. For instance, the hands figures, the girls. personal piece, perhaps not commercially viable, but uh, a painting nonetheless. <laughs> <laughs>